Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, the 8th of April. We chat again and again. We are looking at the book of Exodus. We are now in um, chapter nine. So we've jumped the remaining part of chapter eight. We finished yesterday about halfway through chapter eight and we jump through to the beginning or at least into chapter nine, chapter nine, verses 13 to the end, 35. And um, what we've left out are some of the plagues, the, the plagues of gnats and flies and a plague on the animals and the boils on the people. And we pick up in this passage from uh, chapter 9, verses 13, following the incredible plague of hail that fell on Egypt. And a couple of things struck me is that all of the time that God shows his power and his sovereignty, and remember at the very beginning, that power and the sovereignty could be matched by the demonic powers and perhaps slate of hand by the um, diviners and magicians, etc., of Egypt. But eventually they are literally left in the dust and they are unable to compete. And of course, we also picked up that this was going to take place over a period of time. We cannot say that the plagues all began, say, one weekend with the, all the water turning to blood, and by the following weekend they were permitted, the Israelites were permitted to leave. No, it's highly probable that these plagues took place over significant periods of time. We noted how in the one instance we were told seven days later, an entire week or the required period of time, if we um, interpret the word seven um, as being not necessarily the specific number seven, but just referencing a particular godly period of time. So the plagues took time. How, mon how long? We, we do not know, but certainly it would have ran over many multiple weeks, if not months. I don't think it ran over um, multiple years, and so one assumes that within the year all of this took place. But it took a while, and it often um, struck me as a question, wh why would it take so long? Surely if God is God and He is God, He could bring this about quite literally overnight. So what was the purpose? Was it, was it to evangelize? Um, the Egyptians, well, imagine evangelizing someone by throwing plagues at them. No, they were not evangelized. Egypt was always a thorn in the side of Israel, and, and Egypt becomes a, a reference to an enemy of, of Israel. But then the thought occurred to me, what if the plagues were not only to punish the Egyptians, but it was to open the eyes of the Hebrew people, they, they were um, slaves, they were not a nation, they had lost their identity, they had lost a lot of their sense of self-worth. What if the plagues and the time that it took was also designed to speak to the Israelites, um, who, well, people who would become the Israelites, to say to them, this is your God, this is the God who has you in the palm of his hands. And the time is because the Israelites, these to be Israelites, needed time to figure this all out and to think about this and to make a decision. Is this the God I want to worship? What, what if I prefer the Egyptian gods and I'm a slave? Yes, but I prefer the Egyptian gods. Maybe God then, my little summary, used the plagues to speak to his own people, not to punish them, but to speak to them and to reveal his power and his sovereignty to them. So how does this possibly relate to us? Well, in all of our lives, and we pick this up in the 2 Corinthians reading from this morning as well, where, where Paul is saying that, you know, the hardships we face might knock us down, but they never destroy us. They might be hugely burdensome, but they never collapse us entirely. I'm paraphrasing what he said. And, and the hardships we, we suffer is to show, or the death in inverted commas that we experience is actually to show the life. Of Christ within us. And so what if um, the Israelite people needed to understand who God was? What if we also need to understand who God is? So some of the hardships we experience is to alert us to the existence of God, not to chase us away, but to alert us to the existence and the power of God, to encourage us to turn back to God and to seek Him and to follow Him and to obey Him very specifically. And so when hardships come, do not run away from them. Do not blame God and have a little temper tantrum, but rather use it as an opportunity that God is crying out to get your attention, 
turn to him. Put your arms out and let him pick you up like my grandchildren do when they're in trouble or something has gone wrong. They want to be picked up because to be in our arms as an adult is to be safe and secure. We must put our hands out to God and let our Father um, pick us up. Let our older brother, Jesus Christ, come alongside of us and say, do not worry. Um, I will protect you. The Holy Spirit to be our advocate and to argue on our behalf against any of the vile ways in which Satan would try to destroy us. So folks, hardships and time for God's answers to come to our prayers is not in any way a weakness of God. It might all actually be pointing to weakness within ourselves, that we need the time to get to know God more. Folks, have a good weekend and we'll chat again next week. God bless.